Hey everybody, and welcome to another Kano Reviews. Today we take a look at a classic game that only has been recently released on the PC in the form of Halo Reach that is part of the Master Chief Collection. Now my review will be of Halo Reach only rather than the Master Chief Collection as a whole since currently only this game is playable with the others being added over the coming year. I played Halo Reach in co-op mode way back when it was first released, which was about 9 years ago. It was Bungie's final game in the Halo franchise, as they got quite a bit of fatigue on working on the same series for all those years. Halo Reach would tell the story of the fall of Reach, a planet and disaster that had been spoken of ever since the first Halo Combat Evolved game. The creators promised a larger scope than ever with more units on screen and effects with way more particles than before. The result is indeed a very spectacular looking game that still looks quite reasonable today. The fact that this game is so old makes it to where you can easily run it on 60fps in 4K on a PC that is 4 years old. Halo Reach offers an extent of different game modes, including of course campaign, multiplayer and firefight. Halo has always had a large focus on the single player campaign since it brought something new to first person shooters on the consoles back when its first iteration was released. Large open landscapes that you could explore and traverse would seamlessly change into narrow corridors or facilities in other buildings. Never had such a transition and type of gameplay been done in a game for consoles up until that point. But by the release of Halo Reach, this format was long and well known and thus the innovation would come from different angles. First, there's quite the bleak story. Halo Reach tells the story of Noble Team, a squad of Spartans in which you, Noble Six, are the newest member of. All of the Spartans are quite unique and stand out on their own, whether it's the tech-savvy female Spartan cat or the large bulky machine gun wielding Jorge. They call him George in the game. The gunplay in Bungie's games has always been excellent and Halo Reach is no exception. Weapons feel accurate and effective with the enemies reacting to every shot they receive. Weapons are unique and varied with more traditional guns being switched out with more alien tech. The cool thing about the Halo franchise in general for me is the very situation you find yourself in. In games like Call of Duty, the situation you find yourself in is often the same throughout but just with drastic different settings and location which creates a variety. But here, the actual situation is very different. Whether you are fighting four large and tough hunters in the small and bright dance club, or need to take out anti-air guns while avoiding enemy vehicles, with the option of hijacking one of their vehicles and wreaking havoc that way, or pilot a large tank and destroy everything in your wake. Every mission feels different and unique and genuinely makes you excited for what comes next. They also for the first time ever introduce space combat, which is fine but does not stand out to be honest. It feels more like a gimmick and a stretch on what they could do with the gameplay. Earlier flying gameplay styles with Banshees in the Halo series felt a lot more natural. What always had stood out for me personally with the Halo franchise is the game's AI. I've heard people critique the AI in this game, but I could not disagree more. Yes, there are definitely still times when the AI is not perfect and even does some stupid stuff. I have seen enemies run in place against vehicles for a long time or even friendly jetpack troopers jump off platforms and basically suiciding to death as they fall. But the unique thing about the AI is that they are constantly on the move and often behave differently when you revisit the situation. I had a situation where an elite charged me and killed me with ease but when I respawned and returned to that same point, he decided to fall back and take me under fire from afar amongst his buddies. When you shoot at them they are constantly dodging, making it much more difficult to take them down quickly but does make it feel more realistic and like a proper gun battle. The many types of different enemies also have very different behavioral AI, with the little grunts often giving up and running away if you kill some of their elite units. A few of them, who are really desperate, will even pick up two plasma grenades and kill themselves as they try to take you with them. The brutes, on the other hand, are bulky, gorilla-like enemies that revel in strength and thus will rush you to try and knock you out if they sense that you are anywhere near them. The single player campaign can also be played in four player co-op, which is an absolute joy to do. The areas are wide enough to offer excellent flanking gameplay and it just feels cool to assault a base with your buddy while your other friend is maybe outside in a vehicle clearing enemies out there. It does take away some of the AI units that would normally follow you 
which does take away from the grand scale of things, but nevertheless, there are still sections where things feel very epic. My only critique of the campaign is that it's fairly short. You can easily complete it in 5 to 6 hours, and I would love to see more levels or stories that were told during the fall of Reach. For me, the real meat of this game is a single player campaign, but I know most people probably get this for the competitive multiplayer. The multiplayer in Halo Reach is absolutely solid, though it did introduce a few mechanics that die-hard Halo players were not too fond of. Halo had always been a skill game where gimmicks and tricks outside of vehicular combat were not really present. But now, there are special power-ups one can get to shield oneself from a grenade or other powerful weapons or make you faster, etc. It basically enhances you to the point where you can have a one-up on the other players while before everyone was on the same playing field. I personally don't mind the new power-ups, but I do not use them myself that much either and have to agree that still the best Halo multiplayer experiences can be found in Halo 2 and 3. Sometimes less is more. But the firefights that you can partake in Halo Reach are really cool, which are basically your standard wave survival modes. Firefight is definitely recommended to play with friends though, since alone it can be a bit boring and monotonous. But even with two players, it can already be a lot of fun. The levels are varied and very well designed to offer flanking routes but also escape options if things get too heated in the current wave. There are even levels where vehicles get to play a part and overall, the multiplayer is just a really solid addition to this game. It's not the best Halo experience in this series, but it's still damn high up there. In the end, Halo Reach for PC gets an 8.3 and I will definitely return to the Halo franchise once Comet Evolve gets released, hopefully within the next quarter. I've never played the remastered version of Combat Evolved, so I cannot wait to dive into that classic once again and experience that in glorious HD.